Hey everybody, so in my last video I mentioned that the next movie I talked about was probably going to be Warcraft, but I'm gonna put that off for a little while because a friend of mine really wanted to see that movie, so I'm waiting until we can find a time where we both have a chance to see it together. And that's taken a little longer than I expected because we've both been kind of busy lately, and he's mainly been busy trying to be a responsible husband and father. He's, you know, one of those types. He's no fun anymore. He really isn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so we're going to put that on the back burner for now. And instead, we're going to look at Central Intelligence, starring Kevin Hart and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The story focuses on these two guys, Calvin and Robbie, played respectively by Hart and Johnson, who knew each other back in high school. Calvin was the popular kid who always did everything right. And Robbie was the fat dork with braces who always got picked on. Fast forward 20 years, and Calvin is not terribly happy with the life he's led. He feels it's not as exciting as it should have been and is getting a little bit bored with it all. But then out of the blue, Robbie, or Bob Stone as he now calls himself, comes back into his life, and he is quite different from the fat kid that Calvin knew back in the day. He is now built like a fucking tank and also works as a CIA agent. Unfortunately, the CIA is hunting Bob as they think he killed his partner and is trying to sell government secrets to terrorists, and Calvin is unwittingly dragged into this mess to help Robbie clear his name. And as you may have guessed, hilarity ensues. So there's not a whole lot to say about this movie, really. I liked it. I thought it was all right. It's pretty funny overall. The jokes hit far more often than they miss. I don't think anything was especially memorable about it, and this isn't something that people are going to be talking about years down the line, or probably even weeks down the line, but it was alright. The movie probably has one of the best taglines ever, Saving the world takes a little heart and a big Johnson. That is awesome. And he is definitely a big Johnson, especially when standing next to Kevin Hart. He just towers over the guy. But then again, he towers over most people. And those two work together remarkably well. I was kind of surprised by how well they work together, but they have really good on-screen chemistry. Hart spends most of the movie pretty much playing the straight man. Johnson's character, on the other hand, is a total dork. Even after no longer being that fat kid in high school, still his personality has not changed at all. And it's a role he plays remarkably well. It's very different from the kind of thing he usually does, but... You know, he's such a talented actor and has such good comedic timing, he pulls it off. His character also has this weird thing about throwing out these bizarre movie references. There's a point where he tells Calvin that he looks like a black Will Smith. Yes, you heard that right. He actually said that. I just, I think that was one moment where I just blurted out, what? <laughs> I just, what does that even mean? I, I, I have no idea. And his friendship with Kevin Hart's character is kind of endearing, although I don't know if friendship is really the right word. They're not exactly friends, so to speak, although Bob would probably tell you differently. But, you know, Calvin was basically the only person in that entire high school who actually treated him like a human being instead of just pointing and laughing at him all the time. So closest thing he ever had to a friend. The movie also has a few surprise cameo appearances. I won't say who it is, because I think it works better if you're surprised. Don't look at the Wikipedia page. But yeah, I, I will say they all worked very well. There are a few things in this movie that seemed a little off. I thought it was a bit weird that a guy like Robbie would end up as a CIA agent in the first place. Not the kind of profession you would expect a guy like that to go into, even if he does eventually end up being built like a tank, but... You know, I, I could kind of let that go. I can get past that. The action sequences in this movie, and there are a few here and there. I mean, this is about people in the CIA, so you're going to have the occasional gunfight. Um, not done terribly well. They weren't horrible or anything, just, you know, not as good as they could have been. Relied a little too heavily on the shaky cam. You know I'm not a big fan of the shaky cam. Uh, but again, that's something you can kind of get past, because it is a comedy first and an action movie second. I did think it was a bit weird that Calvin was constantly lamenting how his life didn't turn out as well as he expected, especially since his life really isn't all that bad. He may not be some superstar celebrity or anything, but, you know, he's 
not exactly living in the poor house. He has quite a nice house, actually, and he's got a steady job as an accountant, which may not be glamorous work, but there's nothing wrong with it. And he's married to a smoking hot woman who works as a high-powered lawyer. Seems to be doing pretty well for himself. I really don't know why he's complaining all the time. Oh, you're not a star quarterback in the NFL? What do you fucking do? Is this really what Hollywood considers underperforming? Because... No, it's really not. And it's hard to feel sympathy for the guy when it really doesn't seem like he has all that much to complain about. Also, and I'm sure many of you have already seen this in the trailer, but the very beginning of the movie where they show The Rock's character in high school and it's The Rock's face pasted onto a fat guy. Yeah, that looked pretty bad. This is one of those cases where a practical effect probably would have been better. I think a fat suit would have looked more convincing than pasting The Rock's face onto a fat guy. Overall, it's a decent comedy movie. I thought the main players worked pretty well together, and I didn't feel like I wasted my time with this one, and that's really all I can ask for. Um, as far as a recommendation, I really don't think I can recommend seeing this in the theater. I don't know if it's really worth the ticket price, but... As a rental, sure. I mean, if you saw the trailer and you thought it looked pretty funny, you're probably going to enjoy this. And that's about it for Central Intelligence. Till next time, take care.